Meta is cutting more than 11,000 jobs, freezing hiring through the first quarter of this year. Let's bring in Bruce Croxon for his take. He's co-founder of Round 13 Capital. We can talk about Meta, but we can talk about this also being a cycle story. You've been through many tech cycles, three. I wasn't going to allude to your gray hair, but those numbers <laughs> are just as good. Um, and so we've seen this before, and this is the cycle we're in. Job losses because the market is not tolerating happy spending. Yeah, and I think you have to divide companies into two broad categories, right? At the risk of oversimplifying, you've got companies like Meta, still growing, top line, it's still insanely profitable, still making lots of money, but how long will a market tolerate this market, obviously not too much longer, burning 10 billion plus dollars a year on a science project yeah. that has no signs of, and I'm talking obviously about the metaverse, Right, the latest brainchild well, of Zuckerberg. They changed the company too. Right, and yeah. so you know the the the, the tolerance for that um, may have been the leash may have been a lot longer during pandemic when the stock market was was willing to take risk and absorb people rolling the dice. Not so much now. You're so yeah, he's doing the right thing. You're Mr. Disruptor. I mean, is this space? like the right space to be in? Do you believe, fundamentally, do you believe in the metaverse? Uh, like, is this just a company who's trying to do startup type of things and that's not being rewarded, but there is a market there? Because I don't really, I'm not a metaverse believer. I don't think I'll ever go there wherever right. it is. Yeah, what about I, you? I, I fundamentally am a believer. I think there will you be are. many great businesses that come out of uh, alternative reality. I just don't think you can spend 10 plus billion out of your what 16 17 that you generate on something that is so far out ahead of your skis yeah. you may have been able to um, a year ago and the market was very forgiving because again top line growing lots of money being generated we can forgive this and hey we believe you we're in the mood to believe you the other category of companies which we should talk about, right, I said there was two, they're the ones that are burning tons of cash, mm -hmm. may still be growing the top line, and the tolerance for those companies is next to nothing right now. So you're seeing that trickle down into my sector, the private sector, where you saw uh, Tiger Global like basically decimate their, their uh, valuations to hmm. back to their investors, say, look, we got to come clean. You know, I mean, all these stuff we chased at high multiples, burning lots of cash, they're worth half of what they used to be or whatever the number is, right? So two categories of, of, of disruption and change going on right now, different levels of tolerances for both. Boy, Twitter kind of got out unscathed because at least in the public market perspective, yep. because they got Elon to pay up that $44 billion. So now it's his problem. Not the, not the market's problem, but he's going to have to deal with all of those issues. Yeah, you know what, Amber? I mean, how, how many times have we been on here saying that uh, this guy's my goat entrepreneur, greatest of all time? He is really coming down quickly, in my estimation, on how he's handled this whole thing. I mean, classic example, I think, of a guy having just too much on the go, looked at Twitter for the wrong reason as an acquisition. I'm going to make a political statement. It's about freedom of speech, which is a bunch of crap, right? And that, and he's and. You, usually you think you'd have a plan, right? When you, when you laid out 44 billion and you've got all the banks lined up and your, and, your, and your profit doesn't even cover your interest payments, you think you'd have a plan on what you want to do. A, a 90 day, plan. well, I'll try this. No, I changed my mind here. Oh, well, we verify. Well, they all start to come out as like Twitter jokes, right? Whether it was he was going to take Tesla private, whether he's going to do this, and he puts these like ha 420 numbers out there. And then securities regulators are like, you know what? We're going to hold your feet to the fire on this because he did try to get out of Twitter, right? He, he, oh, yes. he definitely oh, he didn't want to do his, that. It's like, it's, it's like he's operating on whims. But I like, yeah. um, you know, kind of where you were going with that because you also study as a VC, you study entrepreneurs, right? And making sure, um, you know, they're sound and whatever. But at his level, is it possible like he just doesn't, if you're the richest person in the world and maybe you think you're the smartest person in the world, who are you listening to? Who are your advisors? Very good. So there's a guy named Chris Sacco who is a very well-known VC in the Valley. And an early early, Twitter. early investor in Twitter. Read his Twitter thread today because he addressed just that. He said, listen, this guy, he's, he's gotten to a point where he's not taking counsel. There's nobody to tell him he's, he's wrong. There's no one saying, hey, have you thought about it this way? And I've always said, 
that if you're gonna play in tech at any level these days, there's no one person that has all the answers because there's just so many variables and so many things to consider. And you know, it's, we used to say it's lonely at the top. It's really lonely at the top. And this guy has too many things on the go with no plan and not enough lieutenants that I'm seeing telling him that he's, he's off base. Right. And it's, I think it's a cluster. It's, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a, I left out the second word of that. Yeah. It's been a terrible, a it's, terrible experiment. It's a family.